Okay, yeah, I know the previous video we spoke about this actual trade wasn't all too well received. The Darcy Kemper from Arizona to Colorado video had a whole bunch of dislikes and a whole bunch of people in the comments getting pissed off at me, but you know what? I'd be lying if I said I'm surprised. I know the way that I phrased that entire video was kind of ticking off Avalanche fans because, hey, in my heart of hearts, I felt you guys got fleeced on a value point of view. However, I did explain in the video that I understand why you needed to make that trade. You were desperate. You needed a goalie. I get it. Doesn't mean you guys won the trade or anything. Just means that, in my opinion, Saka kind of had to tap out a little bit. But either way... Because I was super honest about my own opinions in that video, I feel like it would be necessary to expand on a little bit more of the bigger ideas here. Because Bill Armstrong is really going out there and seemingly doing his absolute darndest best to gather as many assets as humanly possible. And not even just like assets, but like valuable assets. Now I get it, okay. Andrew Ladd, Shane Gostaspare, Louis Erickson, Beagle Roussel, not really the most valuable assets, but... It's the assets that you're able to acquire because you're getting those players. That indeed is a big deal. Bill Armstrong has done a fantastic job, in my opinion, this offseason, really building the future of the Arizona Coyotes. And when it comes to the way these negotiations went for Darcy Kemper with the Colorado Avalanche, oh boy, things actually had a little bit of a different flavor when you talk about what exactly was also discussed in the Darcy Kemper trade talks. Now, if you're not familiar, Darcy Kemper, Arizona guy, very good goaltender, really, really strong in the pipes, but he plays in Arizona. So he's not really going to get himself a winning opportunity on that squad anytime in the near future. The Avalanche, hey, they lost out Philip Grubauer. He signed with Seattle. That contract got rejected. Terrible stuff right there, Ron Francis. But the Avalanche needed a goalie, and all the other good goalies in the market were already snagged up. Braden Holtby, gone. Yaroslav Alak, gone. Freddie Anderson, gone. Peter Morazic, gone. Bernier, gone too. Everybody on the market that was actually worth thinking about in net, kind of gone already. So that's where you say, all right, the Arizona Coyotes, they have themselves a goalie. He is on the market. He is available and he's really good. And the Avalanche don't have any other options. So what are the Coyotes going to do? Hey, they're going to up the price. You really need this asset. We have only one of the limited assets that are actually available. Supply and demand, buddy. We're going to go out there, charge the heck out of you guys. And you're going to pay the price because you have no choice, which is what they did. A first round pick, Connor Timmins, big, big, big price right there. I mean, to be fair, the first round pick is probably going to be somewhere in the late 20s, early 30s, if not 32nd overall. So it's not really the most valuable pick in the world. It's kind of just like a second round pick, to be fair. For Connor Timmins, though, I'm a big believer in Connor Timmins. I really do think that he is going to be a great player in the future. However, it appears that Bill Armstrong, the Arizona Coyotes GM, only had to settle for what he got in return. Because if you go over to Craig Morgan's Twitter account, he is a Coyotes insider who does work with NHL Network. He tweeted this out the other day. I'm still wondering if the Coyotes moved Darcy Kemper and Christian Dvorak. A source suggested that the Arizona Coyotes wanted Alex Newhook from the Avalanche, but that was rebuffed. First round picks might get these deals done. Boston has been sniffing around Dvorak, but so have a lot of other teams. Now, this tweet right here was actually made before the Darcy Kemper trade was executed and finalized. So this rumor came about with no real substance of truth to Darcy Kemper even being moved to Colorado. But if reports had surfaced earlier on in the week that, hey, the Arizona Coyotes are out there talking to the Avalanche and they wanted Alex Newhook... I think there is reason to believe that there would be at least some form of communication talking about Darcy Kemper, and as a result, a little bit of a revision that says, okay, maybe Connor Timmins in a first for Darcy Kemper wasn't the entire conversation there. Maybe Bill Armstrong went out there, spoke to the Avs about Newhook beforehand, and said, hey, you want our goalie? You give us that guy. And if that's really how things went about, then honestly, my spidey sense is starting to tingle a little bit as to how exactly Bill Armstrong is building this Coyotes team. He's really going out there and trying to get the best assets possible. And, you know, it goes back to marketing. It goes back to business. That entire negotiation tactic is another really good principle that is taught in business education. Okay, you're negotiating for an asset right here, Darcy Kemper or whatever. Ask high. 
ask absurdly higher than what you know a Darcy Kemper is probably worth, and you work the price down to a finalized value that is ultimately more than what your initial asset is worth in the first place. So if you said Darcy Kemper is worth, I don't know, two seconds and a third, you go out there, you ask for Alex Newhook. Joe Sackick says, what are you nuts? Not Newhook. Okay, we can do Connor Timmons, not Newhook. We'll do Connor Timmons and then Bill Armstrong, you say, okay, we'll add a second and a first over there. And then Sackick says, okay, no, we'll add the first, not the second. Okay, there you go. There's negotiation 101. Now, that's probably not how it went down. Like, that's just kind of me building the scenario in my head. Most likely not how it went down. Please don't quote me on that. But that's kind of how I believe Bill Armstrong is going about with these entire negotiations here, asking for bigger things. We even saw last year when the Arizona Coyotes were going out there and talking to the Vancouver Canucks about Thatcher Demko, because the entire Jacob Markstrom thing was a big issue. I don't remember if it was Cheka or if it was Bill Armstrong at the time, but they were asking for insanely high prices like Bud Colson and Hoaglander and all that. In fact, yeah, I think it probably was John Cheka. But either or, that business model has been there with the Coyotes where, I mean, all of a sudden now you have Bill Armstrong actually executing on these trades. Darcy Kemper for a first, Connor Timmons and a conditional pick is really, really good in my opinion. And to even ask for an Alex Newhook is another aspect as well, because Alex Newhook, if you know exactly who I am here on YouTube, I have been pumping the tires for Alex Newhook for a very long time. This guy was fantastic in the BCHL and in the NCAA and in the AHL. He had some time with the Colorado Avalanche this season, though. 3.6 games played and a goal and an assist in eight games in the postseason. Newhook, to me, is like that discount Jack Hughes, Connor McDavid kind of of mold. Obviously, I'm not going to say that he's going to be as good as those players, but in terms of what makes those players so great, it's the skating, it's the vision, it's the ability to just gallop down with the puck, make something happen, and put it in the back of the net. Newhook displays that similar quality, and it's why, you know, seeing him go to Colorado 16th overall after Cole Caulfield and before Peyton Krebs was so shocking to me, because yeah, this guy is a prospect, his stock is fantastic, and I would not be surprised if he became a really good lethal top 6 power play, 60, 70, maybe 80 point guy in the NHL. And him going to Colorado, where they already boast a center who defines the franchise, who carries the game with his skating and Nathan McKinnon? Yeah, it's kind of why I was really shocked that Alex Newhook was going there. Good guy to learn from as well, Nathan McKenna. We had the entire drama, controversy, whatever it is that Zadorov interview coming out recently, talking about how Nathan McKinnon doesn't like sweets and he really goes hard on all his teammates if they miss a pass in practice or whatever. Yeah, there has to be something to say about surrounding your players with talented individuals who expect the best out of their guys. Definitely does boost the standard of what being a Colorado Avalanche hockey player is. And Alex Newhook, I think, definitely can fit that mold and be good. So it doesn't surprise me in the slightest that Bill Armstrong with his negotiations and whatnot was like, yeah, Alex Newhook, give us that guy. You want to start off a rebuild? You want to go out there and build off of Barrett Hayden, who hasn't really been working out, and Victor Soderstrom, who I still think has a boatload of potential as well? Yeah, get Alex Newhook to play with Dylan Genther does not sound like a bad idea in the slightest right there. Man, just thinking about how that could work out together, the goal scoring and playmaking ability of a Genther alongside of the skating and offensive vision of a Newhook, that kind of rings a bell to me, you know? Kind of feels like the Landeskog mckinnon pairing over there. I think Landeskog is a better goal scorer, though, and he projects to being a more consistent goal producer than Genther is, but man, Genther is still a really good pickup to play along side of a guy like Newhook. So talk to me in the comments what you think about this entire idea over here. The Arizona Coyotes going out there in the Darcy Kemper maybe trade talks, talking with the Colorado Avalanche and asking about Newhook. Ultimately, the trade at the end of the day was Kemper for Connor Timmons, a first and a conditional third. But if Bill Armstrong is the guy that I think Bill Armstrong has been the previous few weeks, I would not be surprised if he went out there, asked for a guy like Alex Newhook, spoke to Sackick about a guy that is looking to be a very good steal of a draft pick back from the 2019 NHL entry draft in Newhook. And if Sackick said no and offered up Timmons a first and a third instead, then I mean, I get it, you guys are desperate, but still, darn. Talk to me in the comments, though, what you think of you enjoyed this video, I was 9 and bye.